Each year, around a thousand people are killed by police in the United States. Although there are certainly cases where the use of such force is justifiable, recent events suggest a troubling trend such that the race of the person being detained or pursued has an impact on their likelihood of being killed by the police. But is that actually true? To answer that question, we need to look at the data. But it turns out that we can use the same data to make two very different points, one arguing that encounters with police are deadlier for black Americans, and one arguing that they aren't. But how can that be? How can the same data tell two different stories? Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and in this episode, I'm going to dig into the data on police killings. Like with virtually any data set that we can examine, there are multiple ways to interpret the data depending on what story you want to tell. In fact, what I'm going to do is show you the same data presented in two different ways designed to make polar opposite arguments. I'm then going to make the case for why one of those approaches is more appropriate than the other. To be very clear, I'm not going to claim that the police are racist or that they aren't. I'm not going to suggest specific police reforms and I'm not going to take a side, even though yes, I do have my own personal views. Rather, I strongly believe that the only way that our country can move forward on any controversial topic is by having a firm shared understanding of reality. I hope to provide some of that shared understanding here. So let's dig in. First, the data that I'll be using is compiled by the Washington Post, and I'll link to their reporting below. I do realize that picking the Washington Post as a source is already getting into a bit of controversy, but the truth is that they do phenomenal journalism, and the data line up strongly with other sources I could choose. I chose this source largely because it is easily accessible to me and any of you who want to dig into this. In the end, regardless of source, so long as the data are credible, the same basic stories unfold. Anyway, one of the central questions that gets posed in this situation is if black Americans are more likely to die at the hands of the police than white Americans are. That question is seemingly straightforward enough, and yet, I want to show you that you can use the same data to make two totally opposite arguments. To begin, let's plot a simple chart showing the number of Americans killed by the police over the last five years based on their race. The first thing to notice is that at least over the last five years, not a whole lot has changed, as in those lines are relatively flat. So the first thing we might conclude is that police killings aren't increasing or decreasing, at least not in this short time window. The next thing we might conclude is that white Americans overwhelmingly are the most likely to be killed by the police. In fact, there are nearly twice as many white Americans killed by the police as there are black Americans killed by the police. And in fact, this is a story you are likely to hear. Police aren't biased towards black Americans since if you look at a chart like this one, you can clearly see that the police actually kill more white Americans. The problem, however, is that this is only one way to present these data. In fact, what these data exclude is what we call a base rate. When we plot data while ignoring base rates, as is the case in this chart, we're actually comparing apples to oranges. Let me take a quick step back and explain why. Imagine if I'm interested in something like the risk of dying from heart disease based on which hand people are dominant with, left or right. And then I showed you that 594,000 right-handed people died of heart disease last year, but only 66,000 left-handed people died of heart disease. You might want to conclude that being left-handed lowers your risk of heart disease, but hopefully you can quickly see the problem here. Of all Americans, about 90% are right-handed and only about 10% are left-handed. So we'd expect that if handedness had nothing to do with heart disease, about 90% of all those who die of heart disease are right-handed and 10% of those who die of heart disease are left-handed. Well, as it happens, about 660,000 people die of heart disease each year, and 90% of that is 594,000, and 10% of that is 66,000. In other words, it's useless to compare the absolute number of deaths to see if handedness has anything to do with heart disease. Rather, we have to compare the rate of deaths based on the base rate of people who are right or left-handed. To do that, we can compute something like number of deaths from heart disease per 1 million people in each category. When we do this, we are comparing two values on the same level. We can do that easily by looking at the number of deaths from heart disease based on the number of Americans who are left and right-handed, which I've put on the screen here. If we do that, we see that about 2,000 people for every 1 million Americans die of heart disease, and this is true both for left and right-handed people. In other words, when we compare the rate of death from heart disease based on handedness, there's no difference. 
But if we only look at the raw numbers, those 594 and 66,000 values that I showed before, we might draw a very different and incorrect conclusion. The exact same thing is true for police killings based on the race of the person being killed. If we just look at the total number of Americans killed based on their race, we ignore the fact that there are far more white Americans in the US than there are black Americans. It's the same as with right and left handedness. If we just look at the raw values, we might draw a very incorrect conclusion. So let's fix it. Here is a chart showing the percentage of Americans by race during the same time period. You can clearly see that there are just way more white Americans than black Americans. Americans overall are about 60% white and only about 13.4% black. If we ignore this difference in assessing who the police kill, we fall prey to the same problems as in the handedness example. So what we really want to see is the rate at which black versus white Americans are killed, not the total number. If we do that using the same approach as with the heart disease example, we get this chart here. This chart shows the rate of police killings by race. Specifically, it's showing the number of Americans of each race that are killed per 1 million citizens. And what's immediately worth pointing out is that the line representing black Americans is now at the very top. Let's be very clear what this means. For every million black Americans, about six are killed by the police each year. And for every million white Americans, a little more than two are killed each year. Putting this a bit differently, black Americans are killed by the police at a rate that is 2.4 times higher than white Americans. So is it the case that more white Americans are killed by the police than black Americans? Yes, it is. But is it also the case that once you take into account that there are just more white Americans to begin with, that the rate of police killings is higher for black Americans? Yes, it is. So which of these two conclusions are correct? They use the same data, but if you wanted to claim that the police are actually biased against white Americans, you could point to this chart here. And if you wanted to claim that the police are actually biased against black Americans, well, you could point to this chart here. Both charts are true in that the data used to make them are real and identical, but as you can see, they lead to us to very different conclusions. And this is where we come back to the handedness example for some insight. Imagine if you have a treatment that could lower the rate of heart disease, but you only have a limited number of doses. Should you give all those doses to right-handed people because there are so many more of them that die of heart disease than left-handed people? Or rather, because the rate of heart disease is the same, regardless of which hand is dominant, should you give the doses out proportionately to both left-handed and right-handed people based on how many of them there are? Well, if you answered that you should treat everyone at the same rate, regardless of which hand they are dominant with, then you believe that this is the correct way to interpret these data. If you believe that the rate of something is what matters in determining its severity rather than the absolute number, then you've helped yourself avoid what we call base rate neglect. And in the case of police killings, you have to accept that the rate is much higher for black Americans than for white Americans, which is the metric that is most relevant. To be totally clear, what I'm not at all suggesting here is that all police are racist. I truly don't believe that. Nor am I suggesting what should be done about this. There are many reasonable proposals that people with more experience and knowledge of criminal science and criminal justice can and should weigh in on. Rather, what I'm proposing is that if we were to even start to have this dialogue, we must agree on the same core facts. And in this case, the facts are actually very clear. I know this is a very heavy and difficult topic to make a video about, and I hope you were able to watch it with an open mind. But if there are any parts of it that are confusing or that you just disagree with, please do comment below and I'll make sure to keep the conversation going. Finally, as always, thanks so much for watching.